clap your hands and sing along with me How do you do, everybody, how do you do? How do you do, everybody, how do you do? Oh, you come to gym for fun and we'll get you on the run Hi, my name's Simon, this is The Little Gym at Home. Um, today, we're going to be looking at arms for your little ones. So, uh, whether they are four months all the way up to 18 months, um, the different stages they're at. now. Uh, as we're talking about arms, um, this becomes very important for things like crawling. And crawling's not just about getting from A to B for babies. It's a real important milestone for their development. So uh, we can look at everything from developing gross motor skills to their finer motor skills. And we'll look at that through some of the exercises that we're going to do today um, to even building their confidence as they start to learn, as they move around their environment, um, how they interact, how they become sociable. All those things are really important parts to their development. And that will come from building up strength in their arms. So let's get going. I'll show you some exercises and uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay, we're gonna start with our stretches and uh, this is gonna help build up some of those muscle groups that your little one wouldn't be able to do by themselves. And it's using the resistance of their muscles that helps build those groups. So if you're feeling a little bit of resistance as you're doing these, perfect, that's what, exactly what we're after. So we're gonna start off by doing some little chest stretches like this. Um, so what I want you to do, get them in front of you on your lap. Start by seeing if you can get them to cross their arms across their chest Open and close. Are you ready? We're gonna do this to some music. So here we go. Open and close. And open and close. And again, you start to feel a little bit more resistance either when you're going out or even when you're coming back. And again, it's absolutely great. Let's do five more of these. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Right, we're now gonna go and see if we can stretch above or towards our head. So, you'll lift those arms up, one. And again, you might even find for some of them, they wanna stand up at this one, it's absolutely fine. You can let them stand up as they're doing this. And again, just supporting them always above the elbows. Just lifting their arms up. Let's do three more, one, two, and three. Perfect. Right, let's get some little wings going, some little flapping. And this will really help develop these really nice big shoulder girdle muscles. So lifting out to the side, just like we're flapping like a bird. Again, I'm supporting Chewy just above his arms. Go one, two, three, four, five. Even you can do this at home, even if you just lift your arms out to the side, just do it five times, you'll really start it feeling working those muscles and that's exactly what it's doing for these little guys here. Um, next one was gonna do some little shoulder cuff rotations. So really starting to manipulate their shoulder as we go. We just go one after the other, like we're just rolling our shoulders one after the other, really getting them going. And again, we could do five more, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Now, if you've got up to that point, still got their arms, fab, you're doing great. Now we're gonna put them on the floor in front of us and we're gonna do some other little exercise. Now, the first one I want you to do is a little gripping activity. So just have them facing away from you. Gonna hold them in the fingers, see if you can get them to grip your fingers. And this is because all of the strength that your child requires is gonna come from their core. It comes out through their shoulders, down through their elbows, out to their wrists, and finally to their fingers. And by doing these little activities is really helping develop all these group of muscles. So going from our gross motor skills all the way to our finer motor skills. So we're gonna do a little kind of row, row, row your boat. So we're just gonna row them towards us. If at home you wanna sing row, row your boat to them, you go for it. So you're gonna just row backwards and forwards. And this is really helping to develop everything from our core all the way right to our fingertips. And getting really nice eye contact as well as we're doing this. All the way up. Let's just do three more. One, two, and one more, three. And we're just gonna let him relax back down. You might find with your little one, especially if they're younger, the head is always slightly out of proportion to the rest of their body and then the heads go back quicker. You can always just put your hand down, let the head drop to the floor nice and safely. Now, 
give them a little bit of a break, give them something, a different activity, put them back on your lap. We're gonna do some little bit of clapping. So we're just gonna clap along to the music. So you're gonna get the hands. Um, if you've got a little one that can do this by themselves or they look like they wanna do this by themselves, great. You just let them go on and do that. Whether they're getting the timing at the moment, don't worry. Just let them clap. We're gonna start to clap. So one, there we go. Just clapping along to the music. Now hopefully you're getting them some nice smiles at home and they're enjoying doing their clapping. Um, typically, if they see you clapping as well when you're doing around the house, you might see it straight away, you might see it five minutes later, but clapping is a great exercise. And one of the reasons why it is, is it something to do with crossing the midline. So um, it's a really important skill for a little one to learn. It's like an invisible line that goes all the way through their body literally splitting their brain in the two, the right and left hemisphere. And it shows when they can do this, how well the hemispheres are working together. So um, it starts at the earliest ages, and that's where the eye tracking is going left to right. It then means they can start to reach over and do things across their body. And one of those things we've just done is clapping. So this is a great little activity for them to be able to do. So um, that's why we've just done that one. And we can do these other little activities as we go through as well. So last one. We're gonna come back down and we're coming back to a little gripping activity now. So rather than just coming up and doing row row boats, you're now gonna come up to sitting. We're gonna come up to standing. And if we're still happy, we could even try again. I'm just gonna support them literally above the elbows. Just gonna look at them in the face, make sure they're happy, give them a big smile and then lift them just an inch or two off the ground. Make sure I've got both arms nice and strong and back down. And we can do that again. One, two, three, and back down. And then one more time. One, two, three, and back down. And again, just lowering all the way back down. I've got my hand under the head just to make sure they're nice and secure. So hopefully you're still all laughing and giggling and getting some really nice smiles from them. And those are a few activities for you just to get warmed up to. If you need a little bit more time, you can go back again and try those ones at home. So uh, good luck with those. Okay, we're gonna do a range of skills over here really to work on their upper body strength. As you can see, there's lots and lots of different pieces of equipment, balls, cups, spoons, uh, skipping ropes. Um, there's cushions, there's also these set of bars. Now I don't expect you to have these at home, so this can be the edge of a cot or the edge of a bath, and I'll come to that in a second. Um, as we work through these, just watch me. Um, if you've got some of these in things in front of you, feel free to do them as we go. If not, um, just at the end, just pause, Go and find some bits of equipment you're happy with and you can always rewind play again and you can work through it with me. So uh, the first one we're going to try is we're going to do some little wheelbarrows um, and we're going to start off with looking at wheelbarrows which are going to be at the edge of the bath or edge of the cot. So we're just going to get them to hold on to the side. We're going to then support them, lift them up. Now I've got the, my hands pretty close underneath their chest and that's because if they were to bend their arms I could literally lift them off and they'll be nice and safe. If your little one's older, and a bit stronger, and you'll feel confident they're holding on nice and tight, you can move your hands down, slowly down to their waist, lift them up, and, uh, and if they're really getting it so far, you can go pretty much all the way up to a nice little handstand. If you do feel that they're bending their arms, don't worry, you've just gone too far, bring them back down to more of a horizontal position, and at that point, they should be nicely weight-bearing down through their arms, and that weight-bearing, again, is what's producing nice, strong bones, good, strong muscles as they go. Um, we can do it on here, We've also got these cushions. Now the difference between the bar and the cushions is this was a nice solid object, this isn't. This is gonna really undulate under their weight. So they're gonna to have to also try and balance and push through their arms at different forces. And this is a great little exercise for them to do to be able to feel a different surface as they're doing it. So another really great one for them to have a go at. So have another go, same kind of thing, under their chest. You can move again down to their waist. On this one it's nice because if they were to bend their arms, they're only gonna bump their nose and it's gonna be nice and soft. It's not gonna to be too much of a big deal. Now to advance them up, we now have some cups. So on here, you can try and see, again, if you can get their hands on the cups and balancing on the cups. Now it's a much narrower surface. So now, not only have I gotta try and feel where the cups are, I've gotta also see them um, use accommodation. So being able to see near and far and focusing on a really near object. Getting my hands down, so a bit of hand-eye coordination lifting again up, see if I can weight bear on those. Now, if you've got a really young one, I would pretty much stay 
you've, you've done that bit, you're staying there, you're not really going to move. Nice steady, little static one. If you've got an older one though and you want to see if you can uh, manipulate them and actually progress up the skill, you could even try and walk onto the next set of cups. And if you've got a whole range of cups, you can just build them out and make a little assault course and see how far they can go. So that's a really nice little skill. You can progress up with the age group as you go. Now over here, we've got an extra range of different bits of equipment. So I'm going to put all these little cups out. And the idea here is we're going to get some spoons. And your little one is going to try and see, one, if they can pick up a spoon. And then we're going to transfer it to a different cup. So I'm going to put the blue one in the yellow cup. That was my fault. Don't worry, Chewy, we can do that again. I'm going to pick up the orange one. We can move it across. And we can carry on moving these spoons around. Now, for your youngest ones, um, you might need to give them a little bit of help just lifting up the spoon and getting them used to how much force they need to put through their fingers, their finer motor skills to manipulate the pieces of equipment to move them around. For your older ones, they'll start to be able to do this quite easily and simply by themselves. And the way to progress it up for them is to give them colors. So we're now gonna lift up, let's say the yellow spoon and we've got to put it in the yellow cup. So I've got a yellow cup here, but also I've got another yellow cup here. So you could really advance up the skills as you go and make this a really fun one. Um, if you haven't got these kind of pieces, then you can just do it with uh, breakfast cereal. So you can have it in front of them on the high chair, lots of different pods of breakfast cereal. And again, they can really use their finer motor skills just to pick up very small little objects and move them around and again, it's great for working on their arms. So that's the one with cups. Let's move that out of the way. So another little one is you now can lie them down on the floor. We can get a skipping rope, a scarf, a piece of clothing, anything you like. Nice, typically if it's nice and bright, the better. Just, you now have it dangling just over their eyes. And for the younger ones, you're gonna to have to get quite close. For the older ones, you can move it further away and maybe they can even try and start to lift their head as well as their arms. And this is a great one for hand, eye, coordination. So first of all, just getting the eyes to track the objects and then slowly but surely as they get a bit older, maybe six to eight months, you start to see the hand come in and they'll try and grab it. As they're getting a bit older, you can start to use it um, and they can start to hold onto it and start to lift them up. We can also use the skipping rope in a different way. So we double it up. It now goes underneath their tummy. The hands are in front of them again in this tummy time position and we slowly lift them up into a crawling position. And we just hold them there for a few seconds. We can let them back down. Now this one does tire them out quickly. So we'll put it there again, and lift them up, try and get those hips up, try and get those arms up, see if they can look up in front of them, hold them there in that position. If they start to try and make any moves, brilliant. If not, they come back down. That's another lovely one for getting the weight bearing down through their arms. Right, let's put that one out of the way. And then finally, I've got some different shapes and sizes of balls as well for them to track and try and grasp. So again, just like with other activities we've done before, you can get them to try and track the ball moving in front of them. You can try and get them to grip the ball. And as you can see, we've got this one, which is very small and very shiny. We've got this one that's bobbly and a bit easier to hold on to. And then we've got a typical tennis ball you probably find at home. And again, it's, this one's nice and bright colors, but it's a different type of surface again, and it's a different way of feeling it. Um, so you've got three different types of ball activities. You've got lots of different bar activities and different types of ways of weight bearing down through their arms to build good, strong arms, good, strong bones and muscles all in that upper body. So have a go at those and uh, we'll see how you get on. We're gonna sing a little song now, and this is all to do uh, with our hands. So um, this is Where Is Thumbkin? If you know this one again, you can sing along with me. So you're gonna take our hands, put your thumbs inside your fists like that and put them behind your back. And it goes a little bit like this. You ready? Where is Thumbkin? Where is Thumbkin? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. <gasps> Who's next? Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Hey, now we've done a song about our hands. We're gonna now use our little one's hands to do some activities again with some balls. So I've got a couple of different balls, actually some other equipment as well, a scarf and 
one of these round circular things you find at the bottom of a pool, but it's a little bit heavier, a little bit like a weight. And if you've got anything at home that maybe is just a bit heavier than a ball, um, that's the kind of thing you want to use. If it's a brick, it's probably too heavy. So somewhere between a ball and one of those things. So we'll start off and we'll start off with our lightest floatiest one first. Um, so the idea with these is you're going to lay them in front of your little one. You're then going to take them and you're basically going to use them a little bit like one of those machine grabbers you find at the fairground and see if you can lower them down, allow them to see what's in front of them and then they're going to try and reach out and grasp it. And what you'll tend to find is, ah, it doesn't quite work first time. So we have another go. We're going to see if we can get it up. Ah, oh, no. Still couldn't get it up. So we're gonna have another go again. Have another grip. Yeah, there we go. And we can move it over to the side. And yep, we are a winner. So that's the first one. Now, the difference between this and let's say the balls is obviously it's a little bit thinner. It's a different kind of material. Um, they've got to use much finer motor skills to try and grip it as they do this one. Now, if we move on to one of the balls, we'll use this, uh, this bobbly one first. And again, same kind of action, allow them to see it, let them try and grab it. And now this time, they've got to actually work with both hands, as you can see, they're much further away um, as they're trying to grasp and grip this little one. So let's put that one over to the side, trying to get away. Then your tennis ball. So again, slightly smaller this time, different kind of material. It's great for their senses to try and feel these different things, giving them different kinds of feedback as they have a go. So we're gonna come back down, have another go at gripping. We're gonna go, oh, didn't quite get that one. So let's have another go. So we're gonna have another go at gripping, lift it up, bring it over to the side and see if we can let go and put that one on the floor. And then finally, this one is a little different because it's a bit heavier and the feedback they're gonna get trying to uh, lift this one up is how much force they need to put across. So, and it's obviously a little bit awkward. So if you, it doesn't matter what the shape is, the one you've got at home, but as long as it's a little bit heavier than one of the balls, so we're gonna come and have a go and we're gonna see if we can lift it up. So they're gonna try and grasp it and grip it and then we're gonna try and lift it, ah, not quite. And we're gonna try and grip it and not quite. And let's go in for one more time. We're gonna try and grip it and it's up. Ah, oh, but it's just too heavy, but it's a great weight lifting activity this time. And again, producing nice strong muscles as they are trying to lift up or grasp some of these little activities. So again, lots of nice little ideas for you to try at home. So have a go at those and uh, good luck with those ones. Okay, we're gonna do our little bubble activity now. I've got Chewy, I've got Dave, and I've got your name. I've forgotten because he's called Pluto. It's okay, it's quite I've got Pluto. And, um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bubble activity. I'm gonna sing a little song. This is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive, you sing along at home. Count your little ones' fingers as they do it, and then we're gonna pop those bubbles. So are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let them go again. Why did you let him go? Cause he bit my finger so. Which finger did he bite? This little finger on my right. Shh. Give him a big squeeze. Now I hope you've enjoyed today's class. My name's Simon and this was The Little Gym at Home. It's time to say goodbye.